as much as, you know, within the United States, we have a tendency to think that the United States were the biggest, were the fattest, were the dumbest, were the most diabetic, and we're none of those things, actually. Um, we are not, we're not even in the top 20 of the most diabetic, yeah. uh, where these, these are problems that are global. Uh, yeah. Insulin resistance is global. So what is insulin resistance? It's a, it's a problem with two parts. It is a problem of insulin, the hormone insulin working well. And when you look at all of the cells of the body, there is a spectrum where some cells are not working well. They're not responding well to insulin. Insulin's knocking on the door, but the cell isn't really answering. Yeah. That's, so the cell is resistant to insulin. That's the hallmark of this problem. On the other end of the spectrum are cells that are working perfectly fine. Insulin comes and knocks and the cell answers very readily. Yeah. That is a problem in light of the second issue with insulin resistance, which is the hyperinsulinemia. In other words, high blood insulin. And these are two problems that always come together. You cannot pull them apart. Remember, the second part of it is elevated blood insulin. That's fine for the cells that are truly insulin resistant yeah. because the high insulin is now taking what was a, a diminished response within the cell and in, in increasing it back to where insulin wants it to be, albeit with much more insulin pounding on the door. Sure. However, there were those cells that are as responsive to insulin as they ever were. And now they're responding too much. They can hear all the noise and they're responding to it. They, they still work. And that becomes a problem where there's too much activity in response to the elevated insulin. Ideally, you take someone who eats, eats some starches and they're, they go to glucose burning mode. Yeah. Have them fast for 12 hours and they're in fat burning mode. Um, but even this is a reflection of insulin insofar as mm -hmm. insulin dictates the fuels the body uses. If insulin's high, the body's glucose burning. If insulin's low, the body is fat burning. It really is no more complicated than that. But in a person who's insulin resistant and they have elevated insulin, they're stuck in glucose burning. So even though they start fasting and they're fasted for 12 hours, they should have shifted to fat burning, but they're stuck in glucose burning from outside to inside, whether it's from the skin and the acanthosis nigricans because of the hyperinsulinemia overstimulating melanocytes to produce more melanin, or whether it is the insulin resistance of the brain, of course, driving Alzheimer's disease, or insulin resistance um, affecting the liver, increasing fat production, causing fatty liver disease. Yep. But, but then maybe um, two that I'll mention, because there's such an interesting um, dichotomy is the infertility um, the, of, metabol of metabolic problems. Yeah. And that's erectile dysfunction in men, or of course, PCOS in women. And that's something I know you've spoken about. Yeah. Because in the case of erectile dysfunction, in normal erectile function in the man, part of the erection is a consequence of the, of course, rapid vasodilation, yeah. increasing blood flow. Insulin yeah. plays a part of that. Insulin yeah. actually facilitates that vasodilation yeah. by telling the blood vessels to make more nitric oxide. Yep. But when the blood vessels become insulin resistant, even though insulin's trying to tell them to make more nitric oxide to facilitate vasodilation, it no longer happens yep. and the vessels stay constricted and now the man has erectile dysfunction. Yeah. So that is a consequence of the insulin resistance part of it. In contrast, a woman with PCOS, that's not the insulin resistance part of this per se, but rather the high insulin. In her body, the cells of the ovary are still sensitive to insulin. They're not insulin resistant, even though the body is insulin resistant, those cells mm -hmm. aren't. But now they are hyperactive or hyper responsive to the high insulin levels. And insulin tends to naturally inhibit the conversion of testosterone into estrogens. You know, it's a little known fact that all estrogens were once testosterone. Yeah. And insulin inhibits that conversion. And so now if there's too much insulin, there's not enough conversion, which means not enough estrogens. And now her cycle is disrupted.